to this day, it would have been eight years ago that I first found the trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. I was in high school at the time, 10th grade, and I remember my friend showing me this trailer. I didn't know who this game was made by or what the game was about in particular, but it was something that I was looking forward to for a long, long time. At the time, me and my friend, we had no idea when this game would come out, like no idea. And in between that time, all the way up to 2016, I completely forgot about Cyberpunk 2077. This was a game I was very, very excited to play and was still in the back of my mind. And it wasn't until 2018 when they showed off Cyberpunk 2077 for the first time. This brought back that excitement and that mystery that I had about this game back then. And it just, you know, it really made me want to get back into gaming and to make a YouTube channel, not to make a YouTube channel, but to complete my YouTube channel by uploading and playing the whole portion of the game. And then December 2020 happened. And we all know of the a lot of issues that Cyberpunk 2077 has and still has even to this day. And, well, we're not really going to get I'm not really going to get into the very negatives of the game, but I'd highly recommend a beat em ups video on Cyberpunk 2077 and the whole situation with the developers and how there's all these bugs and glitches in the game. If you like pay close, close attention to them, I want you guys to watch that video if you haven't watched it already. But the, his video really opened my eyes on the situation with Cyberpunk 2077. It's a sad situation, but it opened my eyes to it. But today, I am not going to be here to bash the game endlessly. I'm just here to talk about my experience with the game so far. So in my playthrough, I picked the Nomad playstyle. I was on the fence between a Corpo and a Nomad playstyle in Cyberpunk 2077. I didn't think I was going to uh, play Nomad, but it made me think that, you know, I wanted to be this person who was new to Night City, had no idea what was going on. But the mo but when I played the game, I realized, I guess... My nomad place, my nomad backstory doesn't really matter besides uh, dialogue options. So that was something that I had an issue with, but it really doesn't matter to me personally. Um, I also want to get into uh, one thing that um, really impressed me off of the bat compared to uh, Witcher 3 when I first started playing that. Also, Witcher 3 was made by CD Projekt Red. But when I started playing uh, Cyberpunk, like being into the action of the game and the gunplay, I actually really, I actually really enjoyed the gameplay in Cyberpunk 2077. The gunplay felt pretty satisfying. It wasn't the most perfect first person shooter perspective, but it was really good. And I didn't, didn't feel like the enemies were too bullet spongy. I was playing on normal the whole time, but I did, you know, there was some bosses and was some characters that were a little bit bullet spongy but still it's an rpg so it doesn't really that stuff happens by default but i really enjoyed the gunplay in this game and i have really nothing to complain about it. there is a huge assortment of weapons in this game i stuck to only a few weapons like revolvers shotguns sniper rifles and um and uh, the occasional the occasional automatic rifle, you know, nothing too crazy. I did like the uh, the tech uh, the tech rifle that I used that I got during one of the uh, Pan Am missions. I really like that rifle in that game. But gameplay wise, I do like this game. There's many different ways you can complete your objectives in this game. Many different ways. You could either be a hacker, you could either prefer stealth, or you could prefer not killing people but in this game it kind of doesn't matter whether you knock out or kill people from what i've noticed there were some random moments where they said that oh uh be stealthy don't kill anybody i killed somebody but it said that i didn't kill them but i guess it's just inconsistencies with the game is all but you know there's that so for this next part I want to bring out is story. 
Now, coming from somebody that plays a lot of story-driven games from the Uncharted to God of Wars and all those sorts of things, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretty well-veteran story game player. It's one thing that, you know, I really do appreciate. It's not necessarily a long story, but a nice, in-depth, and, you know, lengthy story. It doesn't have to be super long, but lengthy. So here's the kicker. I've played Cyberpunk 2077 for about 70 hours in total, side missions and story all together. Now, how much of the story is out of that 70 hours? Hmm. Oh, yes. 13 hours and 28 minutes. That's just from going from the cuts that I've made in my uh, playlist. And my playlist is in the description as well if you're interested in watching my playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077. All of that in total was about maybe 14 hours in total is the story of Cyberpunk 2077. I didn't realize it was so short that there was this moment in the game. I'm not, I'm, okay, I'm not going to spoil it, but there is a moment in the game where you meet this character who's basically going to change this direction of the story and, you know, gets things in motion. And then the next time you talk to this person, you're at this moment where it's called the point of no return, where you're basically you're in the end game. It honestly felt like it was like a huge, a huge gap in between that, like a real big gap. Like, may isn't there supposed to be more or something like it just it was just at this moment we met this character and then we're at the end of the game. And that really jarred me. And that was after playing the game for like maybe 50 hours at that point. And I was like, this story is really short. It's it's really short. And that's something I wasn't really too happy about. But even though the story was short, I did enjoy my time with the story and the characters, especially the relationship you develop with uh, with uh, Johnny Silverhand, a.k.a. Keanu Reeves character in the game. He is a very interesting and complex character, and the more you have these moments where you get to talk to him and understand his perspective in the game, and you really understand kind of what he went through and, you know, what type of person he was and how he's been in that situation. So I really did appreciate that, and I also enjoyed the moments that him, that you and Johnny do have together in the game. I really did like that, actually. And this is another thing I did like about, I feel like the story felt more, you know, stick it to Arasaka, the corpos, when you, when you were playing as Johnny Silverhand for the first time. Um, I honestly felt like I would have rather enjoyed a story more if you just played as this, as Johnny Silverham, you know, just trying to stick it to Arasaka. I just, I honestly feel like that story would have been so much better than what we got. And it's not to complain about the story that we do have now, but I feel like this game, I would have enjoyed it more if Johnny Silverham was the main character and you played as him. That's just that's just one of the things I wanted to talk about. OK, for the ne first thing I want to next thing I want to talk about is the customization in this game. And what I mean by customization, I'm not talking about all the certain weapons and skill points and everything that you can use in this game i'm actually talking about like customization of my character's looks this is one thing um so I, you're about in 2018 when they said that you could customize your character in cyberpunk they showed in the um it was like the 45 minute gameplay demo that there was third person cutscenes in the game and this is a point that um i've noticed in a few videos that i've watched is that third person's perspective was intended at the beginning of cyberpunk 2077 when they developed when they were starting development but for some reason they decided to take out all of the third person cutscenes in the game make it all first person and this generally surprised me at the end of my playthrough there was just one just one cutscene where you get to see your character in a like third person perspective watching your character and i honestly forgot what my character looked like at that moment unless you look into those mirrors those specialized mirrors and even then there was moments where i looked in the mirror and my character was bald think what the whoa ho, ho, ho. 
Ho, ho, ho. Oh, I'm bald. Why was he bald? I don't know. It's it, it's the glitches, man. <laughs> but I've always wondered what was the point of customizing my character if I can't even see him the whole time. Like I really could not see him. And I honestly forgot what he looked like. What is all the point of all these reasons to customize your character? Face, eyes, how big your eyebrows are, how big your forehead is, and what type of hairstyle you have, and many other things that you can customize that seem unnecessary. Why is all of that in the game? I literally spent two hours about an hour trying to customize my character when it doesn't even matter i could have just used the base male v and i wouldn't even care so what was the point of all this customizing your character if i can't even see him if i can't even control him in a third person perspective and i honestly feel like i would have liked the gameplay even more if this was in third person perspective it would have been more of like an uncharted you know i i don't know it's just the customization of my character I really did like, but then I disliked it because I never got to see my character really until the very end of the game. And I don't really think that's spoiler centric anyway, but that yeah, that that was a big gripe I have with mine. Okay, the next part I want to go through is the open world of the game. The open world in this game is very beautiful, especially after the point one oh six update on PC. I, oh, by the way, I have been playing this game on PC the whole time, not on the PlayStation 5 PS4 version. I heard that version was just, oh, so many crashes, but I did have a lot of issues with my frame rate skipping when the game first came out. I was stuck from like coming from with an RTX 2070 and a Ryzen 3900X. I at least should have been. 100 frames max in this game at 1080p but for some reason i was stuck at 60 while playing the game and if there was a lot of npcs in areas it would have at least dipped down to like 40 to 50 so yeah that that's the frame rate but the open world of this game is very beautiful very detailed and um, the one thing that i did have gripes with with the crowds is that the crowds are not as immersive as they made it seem out to be they these npcs they kind of just walk around you know kind of in circles really it it i really don't pay attention to stuff like that it's just really the game plan stuff i really care about but if you're somebody that likes open world npcs doing their own thing you will probably have a big issue with this game and um, one thing I do want to talk about is the driving in this game the driving in this game is Ooh, it's okay. It's manageable. There are certain cars and vehicles and motorcycles in this game that drives pretty well. That includes the Quadro car uh, and Johnny's uh, car as well, his his Porsche. Those, those cars are probably the best ones to drive in the game. But some cars in the game, if you make an immediate, slight, sharp turn you lose all control of your car and it's like you're driving on ice the whole time <laughs> it, it's it's not even funny like it's it's one thing you know when I, you play these uh, open world games with driving in it really don't expect the driving to be great it was competent i stuck with the few vehicles that i felt i liked the most and handled the most and yeah i went from there and one thing I do want to point out, um, at least with the gameplay wise, with the experience points in this game, I honestly don't know how experience works in this game. I literally played a big chunk of side missions and my character would not level up. I, w I would play at least like 10 side missions. And for some reason, my XP would be up maybe one level. I'd be like at 20 to 22 i'd be like i did all that and i only got up one level and then when i did the story missions or like these important side missions with like key characters with like judy or pan am my experience points would just shoot up so i don't know if that was a glitch or that's how they intended the xp to be but i feel like the xp was kind of unbalanced in this game and also speaking of unbalanced 
this is also kind of spoiler heavy, but I really think you guys don't matter. It's been a month since this game okay. came out. Up. I'm stuck. I try to see if I can hack him. Dang, that took ten away. Oh yeah, I'm putting I'm putting the good stuff on. Yeah, definitely. Come on, bruh. Ooh. Dang, that short circuit just kind of melted him. Um, the hacking in this game, I feel, is a bit too broken. Because my character's hacking traits was not upgraded to its maximum. I enabled a quick hack short circuit on the final boss of the game. And it really took off a big chunk of his health and made the fight really, really easy. Now, maybe that was just because I was playing it on normal mode, but I feel like the balancing, especially with the hacking, is very busted in this game. Like, really, really busted. Like, OP busted. Okay? OP. So, that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay, I feel like... This is all that I really had to say about Cyberpunk 2077 so far. I do have a couple more things I want to talk about as well. Like the whole thing going on that I found out in Beat 'em Up's video about Cyberpunk. I'm just going to go over a few things. But one thing that really pointed out to me is that this game didn't go into full development until 2016. Like literally a year after Witcher 3 came out. And it's making me thinking, with all these things these people had in this game, and that was taken out, four years is not enough time. Four years isn't enough. Four years is not enough. And it was this other report I was watching. They was expecting this game to come out in 2022. I'm just like, why not? Why didn't this game come out? Oh, yes. It's because the higher-ups wanted that cash. They wanted that money. And it's really sad because this game could have been way, way better. A lot of people did not enjoy this game. And a lot of people found it either subpar. A lot of people were disappointed because of the bugs and glitches and the issues with the console versions. And the fact that these dudes did not give review copies on the console versions out literally a day before it came out because they wanted the best positive reviews as possible. That is scummy, and that's something that's just not right. That's just something that's just not right at all, man. That's, oh my god. Yes, that was that was very scummy on the higher-ups of CD Projekt Red for releasing the game. Especially since so many things were cut out of the game, that this game could have been way, way better. Game of the generation, perhaps. And the fact that they didn't prioritize... The next gen console versions didn't even put them out yet is very worrying because that could obviously tell you that this game was not finished at all. So I just like to leave a thought here. Cyberpunk 2077 is a, in my personal opinion, it was a fun game that I thoroughly enjoyed. The story did disappoint me towards the end, especially I'm not really going to go into details, but it made it seem like this whole story, was, this whole game was basically meaningless, really. Basically meaningless. And this is a spoiler as well, but at the end of the game, regardless of which situation you choose, V apparently is going to die anyway. He's apparent, V is apparently going to die anyway, or either Johnny Silverhand takes his place. Now... I'm I'm not really certain, but I'm pretty sure the ending of this game, the story of this game was to become a legend, to be this, you know, be this, you know, let be this legend and continue to live on. But the fact the story just ends so quickly and your V doesn't really do much of anything that makes him a legend unless it's like at the very end of the game. When you storm Arasaka Tower and, you know, do whatever, you know? And if you pick the ending where you side with Arasaka, you know legend at all. You just die. So, I don't know what they have planned. 
even with DLC, I don't know how this would be addressed. So that's where I'm going to leave this review. I really did enjoy this game, but I was also there were many points of the game where glitches were in the way. Sometimes I had to save and reload or a weapon was glitched or it was these random moments where my car would just stop in the middle of the road and I had to go back and find another way around to the destination. It was just, it's a lot of different bugs in this game I cannot go into great detail about. So if you guys are new here, I do stream my games as well, either single player or multiplayer games. I am live every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. My Twitch channel is in the description below. Please follow me for live games. My video format is changing on my YouTube channel. I'm going to focus less on YouTube, but with more quality videos, at least at once a week. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, Cyberpunk 2077, I love it. I don't have a rating for it, but I feel like this game was a major letdown, even though I enjoyed it. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you agree with anything, make sure you comment below. Let me know how you thought about the game. If you enjoyed it to its fullest, awesome. If you hated it, oh, I understand. But, yeah. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Take care, play video games, and peace out, my friends.